Hello and welcome to the tutorial on building this megapixel controller. As you see here, we have all the components laid out. We have the Teensy module on the left, uh, the Ethernet module, WizNet, uh, W5200 module uh, right next to it, and some of the passive components and modules that we'll be installing this board. What we want to do is go ahead and take the resistors and the capacitor and get them installed. Um, get those in place. Uh, use your soldering methods to get those in. I usually like to start with the shortest components in first. Makes it a little bit easier um, starting out. Uh, the next thing I do is uh, flip it over, just check and make sure I don't have any solder bridge connections, nothing uh, shorting against each other uh, from the solder, the soldering job that I've just done. And uh, what I do uh, here shortly is I'll get the the level shifter uh, IC um, header or the, the the socket. I go ahead and install that in. Um, as you can see there, it hasn't been soldered yet, but because that's the next shortest profile component, I'll put that on. When I flip the board upside down, it sits perfectly. It's ready for me to solder. I don't have to glue it in or anything. So that kind of turned out pretty good doing it that way. Uh, the next step is to install the integrated chip. Uh, you don't have to do this right away, but I I did on this in this frame. Um, be very mindful; these pins can bend very easily, so make sure all pins are are in at the same time. Don't let one straggle out and get bent. Um, I added two components, two shift registers. Um, I'm sorry, level shifters um, to the build build and material list just for the fact that they do bend easy. Here you can see I got some headers. I used some pin headers to, to space them evenly and make sure that they weren't rotated or skewed when I did the soldering. Um, here's the headers installed. Now you don't have to install these. You can go ahead and solder the TNC and the Ethernet module directly to the board. I leave them socketed because I'm still experimenting and still using different TNC modules and WizNet modules to, to compare. So it's optional, but I install. So here we are, we're emphasizing on the fuse holder in the very top. Be mindful that this board is not reverse polarity protected. There's no diode, so make sure when you hook up power, it's done correctly. There's the power header installed right there. Again, be mindful of polarity. You can get a, a diode-based fuse uh, to kind of help if, if you're worried about uh, reverse polarity. Um, here we are. We're installing the LED status. This is an RGB LED. It's four pins. Um, the pin orientation, as you see in this picture, you can barely see that little finger in this frame, you can. We've got the second pin from the left that's longer. Uh, that needs to be in this orientation with this board at this at this position. So be mindful of that. Here we are uh, emphasizing the installation of the RJ45 jacks. Again, uh, check your soldering, make sure that none of the pins are shorted uh, when you install that. And this right here is the regulators. We have two of them. We have a 5 volt and a 3 volt. If you're doing a 5 volt only board, both jumpers need to be soldered. If you're doing more than 5 volts on power, then you unsolder that jumper and go ahead and install your regulator. The TNC has a 3.3 onboard regulator. It is mostly sufficient for everything that you'll need to do on this board. And most, almost all cases will need to be soldered. Unless you have something that requires a lot of power, then you do have the option to install a 3.3 volt regulator. So go ahead and ohm everything out. Check your ground. Make sure the ground pins um, uh, ohm out and everything is clear uh, between the registers through the pins that power the TNC. Uh, the pins that are on the Ethernet module, just check everything out, make it, make sure everything ohms out. And then here's just kind of a quick shot of our code that we use to upload to the TNC. Uh, it uses an Ar Arduino IDE, which some of you are familiar with. We upload that code to the controller, and we have a very lean uh, 32 universe pixel controller. Here I use Jinx to test it out. I set up all 32 universes to verify that I am sending all data to the controller and then I verify that each SPI pin, which there's a total of eight on this controller, 680 pixels per pin, are being sent correctly and that they're framing correctly. Okay, what you can see here is the controller finished and ready. We got the ethernet module that's plugged in. We got the Teensy that's plugged in as well. Everything's ready. Um, this is our old controller. This is our first uh, test on the board just to see if it works properly. <clears throat> we had great success with it. The only thing I didn't like was the component placement. It wasn't as friendly, especially if you wanted to do your own case. And so uh, what we did is we put everything on one side to make it easier. As you can see, the controller is actually fairly small. It fits in the palm of your hand. Um, it's really um, 
I think, in my opinion, easy to use. Here we are, we're pointing out, pointing out the LED for status, and you'll see that perform here shortly. So this right here um, can run on five volts. Um, you have to make sure both solder jumpers are soldered in uh, for that to work. Uh, it will take other voltages, but you do need to put a voltage regulator in it, and that's also in our parts manual, um, our bill of materials manual. You'll see that as an option uh, that you can order and install separately. And so here, uh, shortly, we'll get ready to plug the power up and get it going. So here we are. And now we have our power plugged in. Uh, sorry, we have all of our cables plugged in. So we have the blue cable on the right is actually going to our receiver, and it's in the other room. So we have about 90 feet with this cable uh, going. Um, here, I'm just showing the amount of feet. Uh, this has got the 160-foot marker printed on the cable. Um, shortly, we'll show you the other end, how it's uh, um, go on there but here's the software the reason to test I have all 32 universes being sent to the controller uh, right now the controllers not powered up um, not quite but uh, we're just showing basically how we have the jinx software sending so now the controllers powered up uh, in the firmware we have it set to power on at the blue light while it's getting its uh, checking the IP address you can see that the WizNet Ethernet module is going the power is off so the boot up phase is complete and now it's waiting for E131 packets to come to it. So uh, you can change the behavior of that light if you want it to boot up red, boot up green, or if you want to mix the colors, it's entirely up to you. Um, so here we are, we're gonna go into the Jinx software. Uh, when you set up Jinx, uh, there's an option there to send the data. And when it's sending, um, I have it set to flash green for every frame. And so the way that we, what I mean by frame is a complete 32 universe or whatever you define universes in the controller when it sees um, the data and it loops uh, through and captures that, it will send a, a frame or an on to the light and then toggle it off uh, between each received frame. Now the data is going over the 90 foot RJ45 uh, through the jacks to the capped 5E cable and uh, it's going to our, our receiver board we call it the megapixel receiver board but basically it terminates the uh, the cat5 cable and breaks it out into four spi outputs that are very nicely ground laced um, so each pin or pair in the cat5 is ground and so the signal uh, can go further without interruption and interference and so you can see our lights there working these are a ws uh, 13 uh, variant, so these are the ones that have the fell over, so if one dies, the next one kicks in. But you'll see that I have actually one of the RGBs has a, a bad light. I'm pointing it out there. I believe it's the blue light that's burned out, but anyhow, uh, the, the stream continues. So these are 5 volt strings. Um, and uh, anyhow, these uh, interestingly are very sensitive to timing, but these work really well with, with the megapixel controller. And then I have an old fashioned traditional WS2812B uh, um, strip that's running. Um, anyhow, so that that is uh, showing how well it works. Uh, Jinx is sending the color rainbow reel over, um, it's framing at 25 FPS. I've been able to frame up to 40 frames per second um, using this. It's still being fine-tuned, but it seems to handle it very well. And uh, there we are. Okay, now we're gonna show you what the receiver looks like and how it fits in our setup. I'm using uh, Alexa to turn my lights on so we can see it. Uh, kind of a nice feature. Uh, of course, every geek's gotta have something cool. But anyhow, this is the receiver board. This is currently being just pulling five volts off the power supply. Um, this controller comes with two receiver boards, so you can run them both 5 volts, you can run them both 12 volts, you can run them 1.5, 1 1.12. 1 if you have a WS28 uh, series chipset that runs more than 12 volt, you can certainly do that. Uh, the board is rated about 2 amps per port um, until I do some more tuning and actual uh, testing. Um, I'm just setting everything at 2 amps per port, so you'll need to inject after uh, you've exceeded your 2 amp uh, usage on your pixels. So each port, uh, you'll see that you got the four SPIs, are each fused, and uh, the way that the pins are is it's from the left, it's power, data, ground, power, data, ground on each of those pins. 
Okay, so here on the Cat5 cable, um, we're just checking the, the amount of feet between uh, the distance there, and it ends up being about 90 feet from the controller, which is awesome. This allows you a little more flexible placement from your controller to your first pixel, allows a very clean, stable signal, and uh, I think personally just gives you more flexibility. I mean, you certainly could put the controllers and receiver boards in the same uh, enclosure um, you can stack them on top of each other so hopefully this is allowing people just a little more flexibility in how they want to terminate their pixels uh, as you see we're back here we're looking at the controller it's framing away just just fine just happily um, have to put my hand over because it's hard to see it but everything there seems to be working great um, it's currently being powered this controller is being powered by USB which you can do so some people find that you'll get flickering on your LEDs that's mainly because that's mainly because of the difference of, of the signaling the high low signaling uh, that the pixels are, are seeing uh, one way to solve that is to power the controller uh, not from USB not from a laptop but power from another power supply and uh, make sure your grounds are all connected together Okay, so I'm going to go back here to this laptop where we're going to change the effects. I'm going to change it to one of my favorites, the fire effect uh, through Jinx. Um, this basically just allows the pixels to flicker similar to a fire. And so we're going to go to the other end of the pixels here. And sure enough, there we are. We've got uh, pixels that are um, lighting up like a fire. I'm going to turn the aperture down on the camera here so it's not completely blinding the lens. But that's uh, the fire effect. Kind of a nice little... Uh, uh, deal to throw on the pixels to kind of see how well they can then emulate that effect Okay, so now we're gonna go back. And we're gonna try a different effect this time. We're gonna try a strobe and so just a fair warning a heads up if, if you don't like strobing um, in video or or in um, In anything you may want to just go ahead and fast-forward or end the video right here So right now I've got my jinx set up. I've got some plasma effect going on and I'm gonna strobe it uh, one thing about Jinx is if you strobe it too fast, the laptop actually, or the, the computer, it actually doesn't strobe it cleanly. It kind of stutters a little bit, and you can see that in the display. Um, but anyhow, I just set it at a rate that seems pretty reasonable. And here shortly, we're going to head down the hallway. We're going to take a look at this and see how well it's strobing. And there you are, just a nice little strobing effect. I don't think the camera does quite justice to it, um, but it, it does a nice clean strobe. Okay, the last effect I'm going to do is uh, do some marquee. Now, granted, I don't have the matrix connected. Um, you'll get at least an idea of how well it can do the, the matrix uh, capabilities. So, of course, we just need to add um, 32 more wires to, to be consistent with that setup. But right now, I only got two. So, you're going to get an idea. We're only going to get only one pixel line of text going across. But you can see how well that smooth, how smoothly that marquee is scrolling across on the uh, WS2812 LEDs and of course the WS2811 uh, 12, um, sorry WS2813 LEDs are a little more spaced out so it doesn't it kind of looks a little more hashed out there but anyhow gives you a decent idea of how capable uh, this controller is uh, at least at this level right now this controller is receiving all 32 universes although it's only physically being able to display uh, those two strips of data but this is one way to test and make sure the controller is capable of receiving all universe data uh, with logging enabled you can see it capturing every universe uh, at the cost of slowing it down because the serial uh, is having to spit out data at the cost of CPU cycles but uh, or some P CPU cycles but anyhow um, just a great way to, to show uh, what it's able to do um, this controller is uh, primarily for three wire pixels. Uh, that, so that's your common WS2011s, WS2012s, 2013s, some of the SK three wire models. Um, because this is open firmware, it's basically the sky's the limit. So if you have GC, GC pixels, you know, whatever you want to enable in the firmware, um, it uses the fast LED library uh, to, do, to do that. One um, exception that this uh, may one downside to this controller is that it will not control uh, different pixel types simultaneously. Uh, so if you're using a WS2811 800 uh, kilohertz or the WS2812 format, then that's going to control majority of those pixels. And, and as you can see there, I've got a WS2813 and WS2812 that are working both at the same time without issue. But that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, these are some Pixel uh, controller boards that, that were ordered uh, that I'm getting ready to ship. 
um, and so just kind of showing those off here um, but anyhow uh, look forward to working with any of you guys who want to do the do-it-yourself pixel controller I am more than willing to help it whatever I can um, so showing there some LEDs some smaller LEDs that I also have in stock RGB those are not smart those are dumb ones but anyhow if there's anything I could do feel free to uh, contact me on my website I've got a com contact link um, I can help you out with the firmware, uh, loading the software. We have instructions on our website. I'm getting uh, more of that updated as we speak. But uh, appreciate your time uh, and wish you well in your in your uh, Pixel endeavors.